What's up guys, Justin from Driver Aesthetic here. We're gonna be wrapping in some Aura vinyl today. And I'm gonna show you guys how to measure and cut properly. That way you don't come up short and you got enough vinyl to wrap your whole vehicle. So first you wanna grab a tape measure and then you wanna grab a friend handy. To help you measure it out. And you wanna put a couple inches on each side. And six feet across. By just oh, just under five feet. So we're gonna cut the vinyl out six feet long ways and have enough with the height to wrap the system. So just like measuring out on the car, you're gonna roll your vinyl out to your exact length. In this case, it's six feet for me. I usually nick it with my finger, that way I know where to cut. And you're gonna take your snitty or whatever blade you have. Come out. So you always wanna ensure that you have a clean material and surface to work on. So the car's already been prepped in clay bar. So now we're just gonna wipe it down with some alcohol, get any leftover contaminants off, and we're gonna get to go. We always recommend wiping backing paper off as well with a tack cloth or just a microfiber with just a little bit of alcohol on it. That way to ensure there's no contaminants on the backing paper once we lay it over. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So Manny right now is just currently wiping it off with some microfiber and alcohol. So right now we're gonna peel half of the backing paper off. Pulling at two points to basically make a triangle with your arm and the vinyl. That way it keeps it heavy, tension heavy and tight. One lane. To ensure it lasts. Basically the goal when laying any vinyl is to get it glassed out and this is going to be glass. Basically glass is when there's no major wrinkles or any air that's going to get trapped um, super easy. And basically when installing, take some soapy water, wet it on your squeegee. Or any lubricant, clay lube, whichever you got. Start from the middle, you're gonna work your way out. And this is ensuring that you're getting all the air every time you squeegee back and forth. Any air bubbles or air pockets that will get left behind are gonna come out. All the edges, you can just pop up with your hand, give a little tension. And those will glass right out. on oral vinyl, say you get caught up like this, where you get a bubble just square after once you get, once you're done squeegeeing, say you got a random bubble that you missed. It's really simple, just to take your finger, rub it a couple times and it's gone. So normally what I like to do, when you get to the edge, start squeegeeing toward yourself. You can go ahead and lift, get this big air pocket out. And Another great thing about oil vinyl, if you do get any wrinkles or anything, all it takes is a little bit of heat and it'll go right away. 
So I happened to catch a couple little wrinkles when laying, um, just the vinyl laid on itself. Something you can't really, you can get away from, but minor mishap on installation error. So all I'm gonna do is take a heat gun, apply a little bit of heat, just like that, they're done. So right now, what Manny's gonna do, he's gonna show you guys the great air release that Aura has by palming this big air pocket that he's got with no heat. You only wanna be using heat when either removing wrinkles or post heating as well as laying down edges. That way you have ultimate stick. So we don't recommend heating and stretching because once the car gets out into the sun, the vinyl is going to want to shrink back to its natural state and it's going to cause pullback. So it's really important to post heat once you're done laying the vinyl and after you cut. Also post heat before you cut. Right. So what I recommend before start trying to lay your edge, that way you don't have so much excess material. You just go ahead and trim it off just a little bit. That way you have enough to work with as well as it makes it easier on you. that we like to go to the first body line so by first body line I'm talking this inside edge right here and I'll just follow that all the way down so I get to the bottom of the hood so give your corner a little bit of heat put it down you should get all the wrinkle out on the fenders so that way we can maximize our usage of material we're going to be taking a four foot piece by five feet tall and we're going to do our s cut that way it ensures we have both material for so right now i'm going to show you how to measure your fenders you want to get your length so i'm going to give it about four feet just so i have some room to work with Bye. about 32 inches so I'm gonna give it three feet just to be safe right now I'm gonna show you guys how to make an S cut on the vinyl that way you save some material so right now what we're doing is measuring out the height on both sides to make our indications. So why three feet? Three feet is gonna be our height of our fenders. So you're gonna make a center line, right in the middle, that's 30 inches, half of five feet is 30 inches. So pretty much what you're gonna do is cut from this side, you come from here, So your first instinct on an S cut is going to be basically drawing your S from your height line, coming out, making your S, and following into your other height line from the other side. But if you did it that way, you're going to have two of the exact same fenders for the same panel, which is not what we want. So basically, to make a correct S cut, you're gonna come just a little bit short of one of your height lines. You're gonna bring it down. You're gonna follow it a little bit inward. That way you have some space to rotate. And then you come right to your other height line. Get on enough for your passenger finger. I have to rotate it just a little bit. That's perfect size. You just flip it around and you got the other fender. 
even though this Model X is a bigger vehicle, I can still take 60 feet and make it work. Basically to do that, I make the S cut on my fenders. That way I save a couple feet of material. The biggest parts of this car are gonna be your front bumper, your rear bumper, which those I will cut both out of a, I wanna say nine and a half to 10 foot long piece and I'll cut them in half at the 30 inch mark. That way I can just one piece both of these bumpers and I'll be all good to go. As well as the same material, I'm able to do my doors individually, three feet by five feet each door, as well as my quarter panel. And then my trunk is only about six feet long. So I can take a six feet piece by five feet piece and manipulate that to get the wing as well as the trunk in one piece. And then the bottom of the trunk is where I'll get my pillars and the rest of my other components. You always want to double check your measurements just to make sure you're not going to be short on any panels and pieces. So yeah, this bumper is about 10 feet just under, about 9.8. So we're going to cut that out right now. And majority of cars are going to be, your front bumpers are going to be shorter than your rear. So I'll have no issue in length on that. And the way I cut out my bumpers, is I'll fold it in half. The way we fold that. I'll fold it in half this way on the back of the other side. Make sure it's straight, nice and even. And then what we'll do is hold, pinch the top. Get a little flat. Make sure your eyeball is nice and even. Some bumpers are shorter than others. Some bumpers are longer than others. So if you be careful when you're doing this to make sure you have the correct height measurement. Um, I know at least for these Model X's and Model Y's, majority of Tesla's the bumpers are straight split in the middle. Go ahead and roll this up. Store this away for later and you're good to go. So right now I'm measuring out my trunk. The top, the top part of my trunk at least. And that's just gonna be a little over 4.3, just to give it some extra room, just because there is a curvature. So, I'll take my length. My length is also five feet. So I'll have four by five, four and a half by five feet trunk. And let's go. So, even though my trunk is only 4.3 by five feet, what I'm gonna do is cut out a five by five that way I have enough excess material to wrap the wing with that. I'll show you guys how to cut it right now. Ouch, now you don't gotta put everything in your pockets. Pro tip. Right now what I'm gonna do is tape the top since these cars aren't magnetic and magnets won't work on them. I'm gonna take the, take the top of it. Just over where it ends. Good amount over. That way. And I wanna make sure it's straight as well. That way everything's lined up and ready to go. Take this side evenly. Straight to the other side. Now, what I'm gonna do is practically cut out a U shape. Once I cut out this full U, it'll be the shape of the trunk. So this extra piece is now gonna be used for my wing. All right, so with this excess U piece, what I'm gonna do is take it, sideways and now I have my wing and what I'll do with this is I'll cut this out now I have my wing as well as my mirror caps or any other scrap material I need might be able to get a fender or pillar out of this 
Yeah, so what I could do, do a diagonal cut. Now I got one pillar, two pillars. So polymeric vinyls, such a wide amount of colors and great finishes that the trade-off is sometimes the material will want to go back to its original shape. So we recommend using Pro Bond or 3M tape primer. In more recessed areas, even though you're not going to see this because fender flares are going to go over, I still want to have the luxury of pushing it down. That way there won't be any pullback. It gives the vinyl as adhesive a boost to want to stay down in recessed areas. So on most cars, you're not going to be able to just cut strip by strip to get your doors or your quarter panel out of the way. Some cars are a little bit more complex, such as the Durango. Like you can see, the door is all one piece from top to bottom on both sides. So that follows a nice C shape, as well as the quarter panel starts up at the pillar, etches down, and comes right here to the quarter of the door to the back of the car. So when doing full sides like this, what I like to do is give myself about six inches over. That way I have enough material to slide forward. So, how we're gonna do it is cut the pillar out as a straight line. That way we can just curve it down like normal, like any other pillar. And we'll have enough space to cut out our doors. And then once we cut our doors out, we can just shimmy the whole thing forward. And we'll have enough space on our doors as well as on our quarter panel to tuck in and get behind maximum coverage. So right now what I'm gonna do is just etch out with my finger and the glove on the creases of the doors and plan out how I'm gonna make my cuts. So once I etch it out, I know that this side, I'm able to bend and manipulate to where my pillar flows. So I can cut a straight line on to my, pillar, to my line. And then once I get right about here, I'm gonna start transitioning onto the quarter panel. And that's why we have enough slack on this side to shift forward if we need to. So right now what I'm doing as I'm making my cuts, I'm leaving slack on this side. That way I'm cutting over onto my quarter panel that way I have enough room to shift forward. So once our quarter panel is cut out, now we're gonna go. We're gonna work on our doors. You wanna ensure that you have enough space top to bottom and roll it side to side on the north. I know that I have about four inches on this side to play with. So what I'm gonna do, is find my center of the door. Once again, just running my finger over it. And then I'm gonna cut right on side of my door. That way, Manny can slide his over, have enough space on the back side of it. That's good to go. So now we're gonna just make sure my piece is all right. So once you shift forward. Also good to go. But 